Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. And today we're going to be taking a look at Dark Siders 3. We're going to be finding the most common type cheats we can at first, such as Infinite Health, Infinite Fury, and maybe later do another video on getting into deeper things. And the reason that I always stress that we try to find Infinite Health first is that way you have Infinite Health and you're more free to look for other more advanced style cheats uh, without having to worry of dying because you know in dying in most games you have to start the level over or uh, it loads up a new map and you have to start over again and all your addresses change so it can be a real hindrance so it's good to go ahead and have infinite health before you go to try to find any of your other cheats and just have that worry off of you because we always want these addresses to stay the same because most of these are dynamic addresses that will change if you load up a new map or close down the game or die or, or any of those things so so we can try to eliminate as many of those worries as we possibly can also, as you know, Cheat the Game was recently banned from YouTube for a couple of weeks, and I want to thank all the individuals that worked so hard to help us get back on. Uh, we have Steven Chapman, as well as Live Overflow, uh, my mod, I'm sorry, my admin and, and best friend, Jason Blount, uh, wrote a lot of letters uh, to YouTube and everything, so uh, they were finally able to get a hold of somebody from YouTube to actually go take a look at our channels and see that we had actually not broken any rules, so... We are back, and if this happens again in the future, I also want to iterate that I am uploading all the material to CocoScope as well, as well as I'll be uploading these new videos there also. I'm not going to be caught off guard like that again, and you have a place to go to. The links for all this are in the description, so you can join us over there as well if you cannot find us here at YouTube in the future, so I will leave that for you also. So let me go ahead and bring the game up and get past some of the open opening cut scenes and everything and we can just start and we're going to just dive right into it and get us infinite health and infinite fury i'll be right back with you okay so i brought up the game and i've got to the very beginning of the game and this is exactly where you start when you actually are able to control the character so i brought up cheat engine we're going to go ahead and attach that to the game so good we got that done all righty so what I want to do is I want to make this on my uh, make it easy as possible for myself. So what I'm going to do is eliminate any enemies and just have where I'm only fighting one. Now I always recommend when you go to do your uh, infinite health and things, I always start with a float value because that's usually where you're going to find it, especially in these bigger style games. It's going to be on the float value. But I'm going to show you also that yes, you can actually find your float values using four bytes as well. You just don't recognize them <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do is we are going to find our health which is going to be a float value by the way but we're going to use four byte to find it because I've had questions about this and I've told people I said listen you can find your float values as well by using four bytes as well as four byte values and they're like really yeah yeah you can so I'm going to show you that so we're going to go ahead and uh, make this readable and writable that's just my personal preference you don't have to we're going to go ahead and do an unknown value search now in some games you might want to go ahead and take some damage uh, just to make sure that all the areas have been allocated properly by the game but in this case it was allocated while it loaded up so we don't need to do that but sometimes to be on the safe side you may want to do that so let's go ahead and we're going to destroy an enemy I apologize about the lag, it's because I got so much going on in the background. Alright, so you see here we've taken some damage and we're going to do our normal searches, but we're doing it on 4 byte this time. So we just do decrease value. Now some of these scans, especially the beginning scans, could take a little longer. But the more you weed these things down, it goes quick. So. So let's go ahead and let it do its thing. There we go. And we're going to hit unchanged values. And I'm using hotkeys, by the way. And if you don't know how to set your hotkeys, it's up here in edit and settings. 
and you can come over here to hotkeys and the normal ones I use are increased value decrease value changed and unchanged and sometimes if the game doesn't allow me to pause like for timers or things like that I will make a hotkey for to pause the selected process but a lot of times I won't use it out is I'll just use the in-game itself's pause feature so in this game once you alt tab out it pauses so that, that really helps us out a lot so let's go ahead and get back to the game I don't want to mash anything because I don't know where health was so take some damage alt tab out of it you see the game auto pauses and we decrease and it's just our normal hunt and peck type searching take a little more damage and we gotta get these screens to stop popping up all right so we decrease value again I don't want to die so I need to start fighting back okay so we're gonna heal ourselves and we can see we can heal ourselves twice if you look in the lower left hand corner so we match R to heal ourselves boom it goes all the way back up so now we can increase value and usually that will weed out a ton of them so we're down about 7,000 so rinse wash and repeat until we can get to where we need to be all right and I'll still keep hitting unchanged all right took some damage and we will decrease value unchanged and we are looking for a float value we just don't know where it's at we down about 523 took some more damage and we'll go down to now we're 70 so now we got a good base to look through and you see we can tell what are float values because they'll have like a 106 all beginning with seven and they'll be uh these are their decimal values by the way and uh, basically what I do is I just bring anything that looks like a float value down just to add to the current process let's see here two three four five it's about uh, ten numbers long usually what these float values are so any these are float values if you see numbers that look like this these are float values no two ways about it and sometimes you can just bring them all down here, but I just grab all my ones. Just like that. And we just go over here and change them all to float. And we look for something that may make a little sense to us. And we see some right here. We want to take a look at our health. What I want to do is kill this enemy before I, before I die. And we'll go ahead and heal all the way back up and we'll take a look at what the full value would be. So we heal all the way up and take a look right off the bat. If you had to take a wild guess on which one of these could possibly be our health value, which one would you pick first? <laughs> take a look. So yes, we found our float value by scanning four bytes. So you can do that. So don't dismiss these uh these type values right here especially starting with the one that are 10 digits long okay and these are the decimal forms of them if you want to see the uh, hex forms of them just bring the address down and show us hexadecimal and these are the hexadecimal forms of them change, I'm change that back to decimal and we don't need this anymore we're done with that so I believe this is correct for our health and we're going to freeze it and go test it and just see what happens all right it does go down once when we take a hit but you see it is frozen and it still shows 1000 here so that's fine that's just a graphical thing but we know that this is our internal health because our health is no longer going down we're taking all kinds of damage and we're still good so what we want to do is we want to take a look at what's accessing this address all over the system things that are constantly monitoring it and those that are just being hit when we just take damage itself so that's what we want to pay attention to 
and take a look. You see some going now. I don't want to take a hit yet. You see some going. Those are constantly being accessed. And then we do take some damage and you see these areas right here are only being accessed when we are actually taking damage. So it's actually writing to our address right here. We can see here the address is on the left hand side and XMM6 is bringing the new value and writing that to our health address. We can take a look at what's happening in that XMM6 registry. So XMM6 is trying to write 860. If you see right here the first time it hit but Cheat Engine go ahead it automatically writes 1,000 right back to it. So you know Cheat Engine and the game are having like a tug of war with each other, but we're going to rectify that. Now, what I'd like to do is find caps, and the first thing I do is to see if I can maybe find the cap. Where's that 1,000 cap at? We know this is our current health. Let me mark that current health. current health and we want to see if we can maybe find the cap usually they are right near each other so if you browse this memory region on the address you'll get the memory dump down here and you see it's a just in uh, byte hex code right here but we can change it to their normal values by right clicking display type and come down here to float and there's the normal value and here's the address of our health if you take a look it brings us right to that ad dynamic address in memory right there okay so what I like to do is take a look around and I don't see another 1000 we do see other values of that may be of interest to us later but that doesn't look like it has anything to do with our health we also want to check in 4 byte as well to see if maybe there's some values of interest in 4 byte mode I don't see anything right off hand and I also don't see a 1000 that may be converted from a 4 byte to a float so so good so we don't know our cap obviously isn't near our current so we've ascertained that bit of information there's also other ways you can find your cap what I recommend doing is going to the writing opcode I do that first, but you can possibly find it in any of these other locations as well. But first, I'll always check the writing opcode. Like I say, that's the one where you see the address on the left and a registry is writing to it. Whatever's on the right will always affect whatever is on the left. Whatever's on the left is being affected by whatever is on the right in this particular situation. So, and that's for the Intel syntax, just to make that clear to you those of intermediate and advanced levels so let's go ahead and take a look and show in disassembler it will take us directly to that module address of where that opcode is located and we can kind of take a look and see what's going on with XMM6 so we take a look XMM6 writes right here what happens above here is doing a division of XMMO but we see something is being placed in XMM6 right here so it's looks like it is actually placing a cap and XMMO is bringing down what is to be taken away from that cap and wrote to our current so if that is if that is our cap value we we just have a static address that we can use for our cap so if that's always staying 1000 we can check it what I do is I just bring up a notepad and we're just going to check it. We see that the uh, in the comment that the value is 1000. And what I do is I right click on it, copy the clipboard. I just copy the whole thing, bytes and opcode. And just control V, paste it in my notepad. That way I have all the information, the module address, the bytes associated with it, the instructions where I can read it, and any comments that are on there. So what I want to do is just inside these brackets right here, I just want to copy this this module address and what I'm going to do is go over to my cheat table and I want to paste that module address without brackets you don't need to put brackets and put it on float and if you take a look we can see this is a totally different address than our current this is our cat by the way you can go look here and this is good to have and this is always static it will always be this address because it'll always be this module address so we can go ahead and assume that that is our health cap 
So I'm going to keep that on the cheat table. We're going to go ahead and save our work so we don't lose any of this information. So Darksiders 3, go ahead and save that. And now anytime we attach to the game, it will ask us if we want to load to our current cheat table. So good. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and decrease this. And I'm going to say down to about 750. Go ahead and take some damage and see what happens to our health with that. And it went down a lot. So he don't normally knock that much power out of you. So, And we see that this is staying constant. And we know that that is in relation to what's happening to our current health. Because we just took a look at it. So good. That means that we can use this address anywhere in memory. You can use it up here. You can use it where it's writing. We see here that here's where it's actually doing. It's uh, subtracting in different ways with XMM registries, XMMO. We can go take a look in more detail what's going on, but I don't see that necessary. We can do the opcode for infinite health right here or we can pick somewhere else in memory to do it if we do it right here this is a shared op code to find out if it's shared you right click on it find out what addresses this instruction accesses and it brings up your enemies as well as your hero but you want to have at least two enemies so what I want to do instead of continuing on in the game well, no, we can continue on. I think there's some enemies up there that we can get a hold of. We, we just want to go ahead and let him well on us, but we want to go ahead and bring this back up to a 1,000. And we're just going to freeze it. That way we have infinite health while we try to get infinite health and the information we need. But I'm going to go to one of these up here that is constantly accessing it. We see that there's two compares. And the comis is compare for XMM registries, 64-bit. So we're going to go over here to one that's being accessed just all the time. And I'm going to take a look at it and see what's going on with it. And we see this is another part of memory. So when it's real near a return, there's not much instruction with it. We know it's doing something here. It's comparing uh, for a certain reason. We can find out those reasons later. And these can lead to other cheats. But for right now, I don't know. But I just want to make sure it has five bytes. If it has five bytes, that way I know that no other instruction is going to be carried to allocated memory with it. And so I can put the AOB script or the jump to allocated memory on that particular opcode. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and auto assemble. And I'm just doing this just for test purposes. And we're just going to label this health one so we know what this is. And right off the bat, what I want to do is I want to make an injection copy. That way it always finds my current health dynamic address. You can also use pointers to do that, but injection copies is a lot easier. But we do need to compare out if enemies are going through that opcode as well. So I guess we should find that first. So let's go ahead and, and add that to the current cheat table, and we can modify it in just a minute. Let me take that back out, sorry. There we go. That way we have it. We have the AOBs and everything we need just in case. And what we want to do is I'm going to go back to that opcode. And let's put the debugger on it. Find out what addresses this instruction accesses. Also called a break on access. Put it on float. And let's go take some damage. And you see everybody's going through this right here. There's one enemy. So that's pretty much all the enemies on the level. So that's good. So we don't have to go fight another enemy to bring out their current addresses. We can see here's ours because we have that information right here. And we see this. The, these could be other enemies and maybe other things that are damageable. You got to remember items also have uh, health values that can be damaged and enemies have that so we know that this is the enemy we just hit we know this is us so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this new feature find commonalities between addresses and I'm going to mark my character our hero or hero in so she's a lady and mark her as group one I'm going to mark these enemies just to couple of them. I don't need them all. I'm going to mark those as group two. 
So what I'm going to do, now if you don't mark anything as group two, it will automatically put everything else in group two anyway. So you can do it that way, it doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for commonalities right here. And sometimes this will pop up good information for you. It'll let you know if there's anything the same, if the monsters are the same or enemies are the same or allies with you are the same in these registries. So that's good information here. You can see here in R12 that group 2 has a common value of 1. And if it's always 1, that means that we're different. So if we take a look at us at R12, show registry states, we see that we're just an address. However, if we look at our enemies at R12, we can see that they're just 1. If they're all just 1, and they're always just 1 at R12, we can use R12 itself to be a good compare. But I'm not doing that because I want to go ahead and show you. So we know here that this address up here is RCX and the uh, offset is F4. We also have RCX, it's the same address, but here RCX is holding a different base address and our offset is 814. Either one of these is still our current health address, okay? Just in this part of memory, it's using a different base address is all, okay? So I don't want anybody to get confused with that. Let me save what I got and I'll be right back with you, okay? Okay, so I'm back and so here we're going to go ahead and click on the RCX since that is the base registry holding our base address. We'll just do that one first. And what I can do, you can do only find matching groups. Sometimes it finds where your enemies are all one value and you're a different value. That's, that is more preferred, but you don't have to do that. I'm just going to find anything right now and what I do is I just I have another drive that I use and I go to that drive and I have a pointers folder and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to store my information in a totally different folder somewhere I'm just going to label that dark siders 3 and go into that folder and this is a registry for RCX so what I do is I just underscore for health and let me know I'm doing that for health and this is my first time doing that health one that's just for my information and we just take a look and see what's going on in the registries now we have to pay attention now if we scanned only find matching groups it would just pop up everything that enemies are one thing and our hero is another so it would miss a lot of these sometimes it does that sometimes it doesn't so you know we want to make sure that we you know take a look at everything in there I find that's better so we see that we do have some good ones and I always first of all like looking for zeros and ones zeros and just another number and everything and and usually those are very very good and you know you want to save this information so what I do is I normally just take a screen print and I just bring up paint and I'll just paste that in there and that's just for later if I need it is all there are other ways to do this better ways and that's fine but what I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to use the offset of 50 this is RCX which is at zero that's our base address and this is the offset 50 all these are offsets over here so it's just at 50 we can see our hero uh, the lady is zero and we see all the enemies are one and we can also just mentally make a note that at offset 54, our hero is zero, and all the enemies are four. So we can use either one of these. We can use this, this, this. So you see what I mean the group, by group differences. Those are the best ones to try. I'm going for the zeros and ones, and that's what we're going to use. So let's go back to our memory view, which is right here. Sorry about that. And we already have a script in in the works, so I want to turn this off to take the debugger off the opcode. And now we can continue on with our script. First thing I want to do is create my injection copy. And I'm just going to abbreviate it health1, or just health. We don't need to do health1. And I'm going to register a symbol. And then let's unregister that symbol. And I'm just going to use the allocated memory I already have. Now being a 64-bit game, I'm going to go ahead and use DQ to define and not define a D word. 
being a 64-bit game. So down here, I'm just going to put health, and I'm going to put DQ. In a 64-bit game, sometimes these addresses will be bigger than 4 bytes. So DQ, that'll, that'll solve that problem. So up here, let's go ahead and put our compare where only our hero is going to that location. So we're going to compare RCX plus member 50. And we can compare it either way. We can compare it to zero or we can compare it to one. If we compare it to zero, then jump if not equal to code. That because all the enemies were one. If we compare it to one, then we need to change our condition, jump if equal to code. Either way, both will do the exact same thing. Our hero will continue to go down the list while our enemies are jumping to code. Either way will work. Just make sure your condition is correct, okay? So our hero is zero at the offset 50 in RCX. So that's what we're going to use. And right off the bat, I'm just going to have it move into our symbol, the base address of RCX. And we just have to memorize that F4 is indeed our offset for our current health. So just make, to make sure that works, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Make sure I got everything right. And let's go ahead and label that uh, health test. If I can type. Go ahead and turn that on. And right here we're going to just put in. Now we do need brackets here. So health, then we're going to put plus F4. We'll label that uh, health address. Make sure to put it on float. And there we go. And I just tuck it under there underneath. And we need this to find this address that we've already found. We need it to find that. And no matter when we bring up the game or no matter what we do, it will always find the new address that health is at. That's injection copies. All right, so now that we got it compared out, let's go back to the game. Let's stop the debuggers. And we'll just move that out of the way. And we want to pay attention to this right here. So let me move it over so the game ain't blocking us. And we want to see if that finds it. And take a look. So we have, it does find us. So it is comparing out. So now we can continue on to make our health cheat with our health cap. We already had the static address that's going to be the same every time. So we can right there have current health always writing to our address if we want. So let's do that. So right underneath here, since only our hero is going down to this, is I'm going to have it move into our current health. I'm sorry. What I'm going to do is let's move it into XMMO. It's already being utilized right here, so whatever health is, health is going to write that to XMMO, or I'm sorry, it's going to be comparing to XMMO anyway. Ooh, we can't do that. That's a, that's a compare, so let's not do that. Let's use another uh, registry for that. Let's see if we can find another registry that really isn't being utilized. So we're going to go back to here. Uh, what happened to our, uh, here it is right here. Okay, we're going to go back to this right here, and we're going to go for more information and see what the registries are holding. Okay, XMMO is being compared, and it is holding zero. So, it'd be better since it is a compare. We want to find a different registry we can use that's also just holding a zero, not being utilized in that area. So, we'll go ahead and choose XMM3 just because it's in between two zeros looks good so we'll use XMM3 as a just a bar on it that's all we're doing so if we use it we got to make sure we set it back to the way it was okay because we don't mess anything up so we need to make sure it just sets back to zero once we're finished with it so what I want to do is I want to use since it's already carrying a zero I don't need to uh, move a zero into it so we're going to use the command move SS that's what you need to SS single precision uh, floating point into the XMM3 registry. Make sure to put your brackets because you'll need it here and we're going to move the value that's being stored at this address which is our health cap. We're going to move that into XMM3. Now we want XMM3 to move that cap value into our health 
So we put our health down and then XM in three. Now we can't leave that float 1000 in XMN3. We need to make sure that that is a zero. So all we need to do is XOR out zero. And the way to do that with the XMM registry, instead of using XOR, you just put PS on the end of it. And just XMN3, XMN3, and that will zero XMN3 back out. It'll put zero back into it and take out that 1000. So it's back to the way it was before it hits that compare. So it's like we haven't really done anything to the registries. So that's just a quick way to borrow that registry. Now we need to turn this off and back on for our new code to take effect. And what I want to do is I want to take my current health down to about 500. And we want to see this time if it goes up to 1000. And it went up right away. Now, as you can see, the graphical effect is still going down, but we do have infinite health. So, if you wanted to keep that at full, we would need to go actually put that on the writing op code. So, you can do that, and it will keep that full. It's always going to be going up when your cap goes up later. It's always going to keep even, but it will always still do that little bit of graphical change because it's we haven't really nullified the subtraction or any kind of calculations it's doing with health it's still the game is still subtracting health but we're moving 1000 right back into it so but this still gives you infinite health and you're good so do it however you like it's, it's just up to you and we just need to make sure that enemies are dying and they do now we can go find fury and just to save you some time and everything, since I've already went the long way, I'm just going to go directly to it. And I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, at full, it's going to be float 100, because I've already found it. So right now, I don't know where it's at. I can guess it's probably around 50, but I'm going to, I'm just going to give it some leeway, and say I want every float value between 1 and 100, or 30 and 100. So we're going to do value between. First scan. let it go there we go so let's go back to it and we just need to fight until it increases so I'm gonna pause it while I increase this okay in the exact same manner that we went to find health I did the same for fury just letting the fury bar fill up increase increase use it decrease and then I came across this value here now you do not notice a graphical change but it is 100 if you freeze it you don't see your bar fill up but take a look you can still use your fury over and over again so that is fury right there so um, what I will do is I'm going to end the video here and we can pick up in the next lesson because I would like to continue on with this game because I would like to do a teleport. I would like to see if maybe we can do a super jump. But, you know, finding the basics first with infinite health and your magic, which is fury in this game, you know, is a good starting point. I always recommend find your easy stuff first, then go into the more complex game hacks. And next time, what we're going to do is look for her coordinates and try to find other attributes. So make sure to stay tuned for that lesson, which should be out next week. So I want to thank you guys for sticking with me. I want to thank my Patreon partners uh, as well for sticking with me uh, through this downtime that we had because of this misunderstanding with YouTube. But uh, I'm glad we got everything resolved and hopefully it stays resolved. But I want to thank you guys for coming out and supporting Cheat the Game. Uh, I love every single one of you and I really do appreciate all your support. I really do. And all the encouragement you guys came on and gave me and the welcome back that you all gave me. It just, it just really made my day and thank you all so much for your continued support but i also you know thanking my partners if you too would like to be a partner they do get exclusives about every month when i'm able to get my hands on something they get it free of charge i make it worth their while to be a, a ctg partner do my best to and uh and if you would like to come 
and be a part of that. Uh, I give out free lessons. I give out free courses. I give all kind of free stuff to them. I just throw free stuff to them, right and left, free games, you name it. And uh, I got all kind of uh, new stuff coming out in the future. So come join us over at Patreon. Only costs a dollar a month. And you too can be a CTG partner. But I want to thank every single one of you for coming here. And uh, if you can, drop a like on it so we can get back up into the rankings and the YouTube search because we fell way down uh, being out for two weeks. But if you can help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. And I know there's some that's going to put a dislike because I got haters out there too. But hey, you got to deal with them too. So don't worry about the dislikes on it because I know uh, you guys will help me out. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, guys, I'm out of here. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas. Because believe me, they do not mind cheating you. We'll continue this on the next video. Take care, guys.